Boomer Sooner, everybody. My name's Harry James. We are eight weeks out until the first edition of not only OU football, which I'm excited about, but all of college football. And that means that we're halfway done with the preview series. And right dead heart in the middle is another purple team. Purple and gray of Kansas State. Kind of where you would expect them to be anyway. Kind of in the middle. Kind of mediocre. Never in the lower half of the division. Always in the upper echelon of the conference. But usually not a conference champion. Yet they have a couple of them. We'll preview Kansas State next. Only right here, Boomer Sooner 1982. Don't go away! To the show, everybody. My name's Harry James. The Kansas State Wildcats play their home games uh, in Bill Snyder Memorial Stadium. One of, I believe, two might now be the only coach to have the stadium named after him. Uh, for a living college football legend. Think about that for a second. Probably why, as our good friend, uh, Barry Switzer's called him the coach of the decade, or the coach of the century, uh, meaning that he could do what he did as quickly and as efficiently as he did, putting them in position to... As I always, as I said in the preview set, set themselves up always to contend for the upper echelon and never for the lower echelon of the conference for Bill Snyder. Speaking of being consistent, they were consistent last year in doing it. Uh, eight and five, not bad. Their conference record was five and four, not too bad again. Uh, one of those four losses, by the way, Oklahoma. Pushed him to the brink in that uh, classic game. Oklahoma really played well. Had, we had to turn it around in the second half, really, to uh, to clinch that one. And really, that was the Rodney Anderson come out story in that. But with as we were talking about with eight and five, they did get to a bowl. They beat uh, UCLA, the Chip Kelly list. UCLA, by the way. They're, he's there now, but he wasn't there when they lost. You ready for this one? 35-17 to 17 in the Cactus Bowl out in Arizona, IA. Leading them to the 8-5 overall 5-4 record in conference play is, as we talked about, Bill Snyder, the sly one. Uh, the the leading uh, uh, statistical characteristics for Kansas State are as follows. Number 10, Skyler Thompson had 689 yards in the air to go with five touchdowns. Did last year, though, have three interceptions. The rushing statistical leaders, uh, number 34, Alex Barnes had 146 carries. To go with 819 yards, did have seven touchdowns. But the backup quarterback is what really made this thing work. 100 rushes for 500 yards on the ground with eight 
touchdowns for number five, Alex Delton. So they usually use it in two different ways. When they want to run the ball, they, they'll use Alex. But when they're ready to spread it out, they'll use Skyler Thompson. But, as, but Alex also had a pretty decent year passing. If you're going to do that and have decent years in the air, you got to have some receivers to get to, to get it to. They do. Number seven, Isaiah Zuber. And number 83, Alex uh, uh, or Delton uh, Sharoon. We'll start with Isaiah Zuber. 51 catches for Zubes to go with 510 yards and four touchdowns. Number 83, Alex uh, Sujion, 23 receptions to go with 470 in the air, three touchdowns. But we all know what Bill Snyder makes his staple on, and it always has been and always will be defensive stops to get the position for them to land in the upper echelon of the Big 12. And he does it again with two defensive players, standouts. Number 20, a linebacker, Denzel Goolsby, and the defensive back, number 21, Kendall Adams. We'll start with 20, Denzel Goolsby. 65 uh, total tackles by the middle of the year last season. Two forced fumbles. He didn't recover any, but he had two interceptions from his linebacker court. Kendall Adams, number 21. He's a defensive back. He had 51 tackles from the DB selection uh, spot. A forced fumble. A fumble recovered. And three interceptions. For Bill Snyder, who is... A 1962 grad from William and Jewel out in Missouri. Uh, coaching history. Uh, took over the Kansas State Wildcat program and got things really wild in the 90s when Oklahoma was kind of... They weren't quite the Oklahoma that we all know and care about. Oklahoma State really wasn't. And guess what? Kansas State and Bill Snyder took advantage because from that era, from 89 to 2005, that's where he made his name. That's where he made his mark. Then Oklahoma started getting good again. Oklahoma State started getting good again. And so he retired. And that's when Kansas State started to dip. So what does he do? He comes back out of retirement in 2008. And still is there to this day. To start 2018 in his, uh, what would that be, his 10th consecutive season and 27th overall season. Yep. 08-28. Yep. Team, that is. In those years, combined 17 seasons, or 27 seasons coming into 28. Uh, let's see. 210 to 110 in one record. That is a 65% winning clip. At Kansas State, that's not bad to have a winning percentage over 500 at Kansas State. Uh, their bowl record, not quite as flashy. Still 47%, not bad That with a 9-10 and 10 record. As we said, in his 27th season, in charge of the Wild Pack. Cats. Three divisional titles while in charge of the Wildcats in Big 12 play. Uh, got one in 2008, division title. Division titles also came in 2000. Sooner fans remember refacing that very good Kansas State team with only one loss, beating them again in Arrowhead. And 2003, when they got a little bit of revenge and they beat an undefeated Oklahoma team. Darren Sproles, the Darren Sproles game. Uh, that's all you got to say on that, Darren Sproles. You'll know exactly what I mean when I say that. Great player, by the way, in the NFL also, but really made his name that night in Chili Night in Kansas City. Regular outright conference titles. The, as we said, the, the uh, Sproles game, Darren Sproles game, 
back in 2003, won that one in Kansas City, and then also won an outright title in Norman in 2012. Uh, Sooner fans remember that season, uh, losing to Kansas State, Notre Dame, and A&M. Three good losses. Not that you were whatever want good losses, but back in 2012, I believe is when that was. Yeah, 2012. Those were good losses. Uh, Notre Dame, of course, played for the national championship. Kansas State won the division, I believe. They did win the conference. And A&M, I believe that was the year that they uh, they went to the Cotton Bowl. And I believe that was the year that Johnny, Johnny Football. Johnny Football. Remember the A&M, the Bama play. Don't you, don't you Aggie fans? Remember that one? The A&M play? Yeah. So, anything can happen in college football. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. My name is Terry James. The next preview will be when the Sooner Boomers head down to Lubbock, Texas, or Lubbock, Texas. That game will be played on the Halloween weekend. That's never a time to play can't tech is on a Halloween weekend. But oh, you will. We'll preview that one plus. Get you all set for another great, hopefully great year of college football. For football and for the Sooners. As we keep trucking through the conference schedule, we'll preview Texas Tech next week. But for this week, my name is Harry James. Thanks for watching and uh, Boomer Sooner, everybody. You can catch this and all my other videos on the YouTube, Boomer Sooner 1982 on YouTube. They are also on Facebook, Harry James Taylor, or on my Twitter account, at Hype Man Harry. All right, guys, till next time. Thanks for watching and Boomer Sooner, everybody. Take care. I'm out of here.